It's so little and it sounds so good. Now the box is uh, pretty snazzy. It's got a texture on it. Open it up and it's, you know, everything's presented nicely. It's uber fancy and nice, well packaged. Good job, it makes Apple look crappy. It's like that, that nice of a packaging, so that's good to see. You also get your USB cable, uh, your connector here for balanced. It uses the USB, or the micro USB on one side for the grounding. Plug it in here. Plug your re regular headphones in here and then you get kind of an unbalanced experience with those. Yeah, so I mean, sounds different to me. This is paired with the uh, RE600 or the RE400 uh, earbuds. I've got the RE400s. The RE400s, decently small earbuds. I generally don't like earbuds, but um, these sound unbelievably good for the money. They're typically like a hundred bucks and I've, I've never heard a pair of earbuds that sound as good as these for a hundred bucks. If you want to use these with a different device, they include an adapter because these are balanced. And uh, this is an adapter that'll allow you to plug your balanced, you know, RE400s into any device you want to. This is the Hi-Fi Man HM700. It's a portable audio player and uh, this is small. It's so tiny, man. Hi-Fi Man has some really high quality stuff and it's usually huge. It's like you're carrying a brick around in your pocket. And they decided they wanted to make something a lot more portable for people who were complaining about having to carry a brick around or people who wanted to go and, and work out and also have extremely high quality sound in their pocket. Because let's face it, the iPod sounds decent but it's not like this. This is unbalanced, man. And it's also, I mean, it's, it's Hi-Fi Man Engineering. Their, their, their headphones are just some of my favorites on the planet. Um, so I haven't really heard anything from Hi-Fi Man to this day that I thought, oh, that doesn't sound good. Everything sounds awesome. And this is no exception. This, this thing sounds really, really good. So let's go through the specifications and uh, then we'll talk about the pros and cons and just you know, see if this is something you may want or not. Uh, it's got 32 gigabytes of internal storage and that'll hold about 100 uh, lossless files like FLAC or something like that. Um, you could probably put a lot more on it if you use like you know, 320 kilobyte MP3s or you know, high quality AAC files, MP4s or whatever. You could probably put a lot on there. And it'll support waves, MP3s, Ape, FLAC, wave at 16 and 24 bit plus 44100 or 4800 uh, kilohertz. That's all the different you know file types you can put on here. The size of this it's four by two, oh, that's in inches, and it weighs uh, 82 grams which is 2.9 ounces so it's extremely uh, lightweight and it's got a 15 hour battery life as well and you just charge it up with micro um, uh, USB. Plugs into the side, charges right up, and uh, also syncs up with your computer that way. When you plug this thing in, it just opens up on the screen and it's the way I like it to be. You just drag and drop the music to a folder and you're done. There's no need to download any fancy software or anything like that, or there's no um, DRM. You just drag it into a folder, the folders are clearly organized, and then the file browser here on the HM700 just browses through all the files and lets you listen to whatever you want to. Oh my God, why is it so difficult for all the other you know, MP3s out there? I know there's some other MP3 or no, MP3 players or portable audio players out there, but my God, Apple. Why, why all the DRM when you can have a you know good device like this to give you amazing audio and then no DRM? I, I don't know. The balanced output, that is um, you know sort of a, a key feature about this, the balanced output. And if you're someone who has not uh, heard of or you know has no idea what I'm talking about with balanced output, uh, it, it effectively gives you a ground and a regular signal and it eliminates the noise. It's mainly used in, uh, well it's used in a lot of professional applications. When you have to go from a long distance, it'll get rid of all the noise that's you know, getting into the line, uh, which can really help the, the signal sound nice and clean. With these, they advertise that it helps to open up uh, the sound stage, and I found that to be true before I even read their, their marketing. I plugged them in, it was using the balanced head, uh, or earbuds. This thing's kind of aggressive and forward, but when you plug that in, it opens it up and it gives it a softer um, you know, sound signature. It's interesting and also extremely nuanced. And they even include an adapter so that you can use uh, the balanced output with a regular pair of headphones. I know it's not quite the same, but I did notice a big difference in just a regular unbalanced pair of headphones when using the balanced adapter. It really made, th it, it's weird. It's like you sit back and you just like, and it, it just transports you, man. You're like, whoa. I can hear everything. It's kind of airy. It's just really, really an, an interesting sound. Um, now the screen and the interface. Let's talk about that. That's probably the Achilles, Achilles heel here. It's the, um, I mean, we're, as soon as you pick it up and you look at the interface, you're like, whoa, man, I'm back in the 90s. This interface is not made to impress. It's not touchscreen. The screen is tiny. It's terrible outdoors. In, in bright sunlight, you can barely see it. Plus the fact that the thing is almost a mirror on, on this side. Like, you know, when it's turned off, you can, you can use this to put on your makeup or whatever, man, if you wanted to like do your eyeliner or something. But no, it's, it's the screen is, um, I don't know, it's, it's pretty weird. And the interface itself is not intuitive in, in, at all. Like you got the three 
you know, uh, I guess there's a copper colored plastic buttons here. The unit does feel really nice, I mean, I'll tell you that. Um, but, you know, the middle one, if you hold it down, it, it turns it on. And then these two on the side, for some reason, I, I, that's volume up and down. And then down here we have, um, you know, the different selectors. The play button is the forward button here. I don't know, something about this is just not intuitive to me. I, I kept pressing this middle button here to be like the select button to like select things. And it wasn't working because this button selects things and then it also becomes play and pause. And then you, it's just, then you hit this to go back. It's just, or that's the lock button. I, I don't know, it's like, I found this to be one of the least intuitive interfaces I've ever used. It takes a lot of getting used to. Uh, even after using this thing for a couple of weeks, I'm still hitting the wrong button and cursing at it. If you're someone who's uh, finicky with your music or, or fickle with your music and you're always changing and you're like, eh, I don't want to listen to three minutes of this song and three minutes of that song and I want to skip between 10 different artists, you're probably going to hate the interface on this if you're constantly accessing it and, and, and that sort of thing. Uh, you can create playlists and you can even do, you know, use the, the, the computer to help you create some playlists and that sort of thing. And then you can just press play and go. And that is how I would recommend using this thing. If you're someone who's going to go for a jog or, or you know, you want to sit in a nice room and listen to a, a good, I mean, you can use this at home, it's no problem, even though it's, it's portable. But it, it sounds really, really good. So you could just set up a playlist of 15, 20 songs and sit down and just not change it for a while. Um, if you fill this thing up and you want to navigate through it using the interfa interface, you know, just going up and down, you are not going to be very happy. It's just cumbersome. It doesn't lock up. Hey, there's something. It's never locked up for me. It's It always is responsive. It does what I tell it to do. But uh, the screen is, you know, like I said, from the 90s. And uh, if you look at that shine right there, if it hits a light, it is very difficult to see. So set it, hit play, and leave it alone, man, or else you're going to be hating yourself. I would also have loved to see um, like a micro SD slot. I believe they could have fit one somewhere in here. I'm sure this thing's loaded up to the, you know, loaded up to the gills with, you know, hardware on the inside, but I would have taken something that was even, you know, like a few millimeters longer if they could have fit a micro SD slot in here uh, because 32 gigabytes is pretty good for a lot of people, but I'm sure most of you out there probably have more than 32 gigabytes worth of music. I mean, you don't have to have all of it in your pocket at once, but why not? Now, again, a lot of these things can be addressed by moving into one of their larger units, but then you lose the portability. All right, let's talk about the sound quality of this device. Now, this thing is um, uh, pretty neutral. Uh, it's not warm, it's not quite cold. Uh, it does have um, slightly aggressive sound, crisp and, and punchy, slightly uh, you know, sparkly in the treble, but it's, that could have just been like what I thought I was hearing. It's, it's really just about powering your, your earbuds. The coloration is done with your headphones typically. And um, you know, it's, it's digital, it's you know, different than like a you know, tube amp and all that's not warm in the least. It's a pretty flat signature, it seems like, is what's coming out of this. Let's talk about the RE400s now. I actually have been using these for the last, I don't know, six or seven episodes of the tech with this little adapter. I plug it in and Wendell's voice sounds so amazing now because of these things. So I'm, I'm really, really enjoying these. Um, other than that, it's, you know, for the music, they sound great. So let's talk about the, um, the specs and then we'll uh, talk about you know, how they sound in, in, in music. Now we have uh, 8.5 millimeter drivers and um, we have, that's a titanium diaphragm. And uh, then we have neodymium magnets and a copper cabling wrapped around that. Frequency response range is 15 to 22 kilohertz. Sensitivity is 102 decibels at uh, one milliwatt and uh, the impedance is 32 ohms. Pretty standard specs there, but they sound really good. I mean, the frequency response range on these, it, it sounds great. You, you, when you put these in, First thing you're going to notice is they, they do a really good job of isolating. Um, you know, other people in the room put them in, they create a really good seal. So let's say that the earbuds don't exactly fit correctly. Well, there's, there's tons of different options here. Softer ones, harder ones, larger ones, bigger ones. There's a whole package. It's ridiculous. You have, I mean, any ear is going to work with these. I'm, I'm saying that any ear is going to be able to work with these. It's very easy to, to change these on and off. And also, I like the fact that you can take them off easily and, and give them a little cleaning. And um, beyond that, there's a clip that comes in here. So if you wanted to clip the cable down somewhere and not have it flopping around, that can be especially handy uh, for going on jogs and that sort of thing. These, they have really good bass response. I mean, I don't listen to a lot of electronic music, so it may not be sufficient uh, for people who want to listen to hip hop dubstep and that sort of thing, but it is pretty booming and clean classical music, like the, you know, the, the bass is like, it's really nice. You, get, you can really hear it uh, in there. Um, uh, rock and roll, kick drum is, tight and has a powerful you know hit behind it 
Um, vocals also sound really clean. And the one thing I like about these is there's sort of a, I don't know, like a breathiness, a breathy quality about them. Some people, I guess, call that airy. The treble was bright, but it doesn't produce fatigue. It's just clean, and there's a soft edge on everything that I really like. But they sound really good, and especially with the, you know, the, the balanced output on these, it, it really, really helps. Um, I notice when you plug them into a regular source, it's a little bit brighter. So I think they both really sound good. And I mean, it's all about the sound quality here. Uh, the biggest downside being the screen and, and just the interface. It's, in a word, it's really awful. And uh, I, I didn't expect it to be amazing because I think all of the R&D and all the technology goes into the audio quality here. It's not about producing a, a slick, you know, touchscreen interface or anything like that. It's about producing the best sound quality possible. It's for discerning people who really need the best sound quality possible and want it in a portable device. But also you can get this. Uh, this is, you know, like a little armband you put on. This fits right in there. Now this is kind of cool because it, it has the, uh, the clear face here on the outside. You put it on your arm. And uh, since it has a clear face and all these buttons, it's not a touch screen, they're actually tactile buttons. You can actually, you know, use the unit right through here. Put it inside there and click away. It's really sealed in there nicely. This is gonna be great if you're going to the gym because you can, you know, get a little bit of drops of water, some sweat on here. You could probably even, actually this thing, you could probably go jogging in the rain and be all right. I mean, you wouldn't want to get the water in there or anything, but a little bit of light rain may be okay on this. I'm not endorsing that idea, but saying you may be able to get away if it starts raining while you're out on a jog. It's sealed in there nicely. Um, last thing I want to mention is that the, um, the headphone jack, instead of being on the top of the bottom uh, and, the, and the USB, it's on the bottom here. So we got headphones here. They're both on the side. So you'll have cords sticking out of each side of it instead of on the top or the bottom. I would have much rather have the ports on the top or the bottom. I think it would have made a lot more sense. When you have the, like the um, adapter here for um, the balanced option and you have that on, then you have a cord coming out of each side of the bottom and you put that in your pocket, it just makes it a little bit more uncomfortable in your pocket. So that's another thing to think about. For me, it really is all about sound quality and I haven't heard any portable audio players that sound anywhere near this good. The earbuds sound amazing for the money. So from that standpoint, it's about as good as it gets. Usability standpoint, I don't know.